there was a place called Goodwill Industries. Since coming to Goodwill, I not only have gainful employment, I have gained much needed experience. I think I'm going to have a great future here. I get a lot of experience, and I really like it. I enjoy my work very much. This has given me a sense of respect and usefulness. You can just be yourself at Goodwill. The roots of Goodwill Industries can be traced back to its founder, Edgar J. Helms. A man of uncommon character and conviction, Helms started the movement that would grow into Goodwill Industries, a movement that would transform millions of lives through the course of a century. Edgar James Helms was born near Malone, New York in January of 1863. As a young man, he dreamed of studying law and tried his hand at newspaper publishing, but eventually felt called to the ministry. In the winter of 1889, the young Helms enrolled in Boston University Theological School. During this time, waves of immigrants were overwhelming cities like Boston. Helms was appalled that so little was being done for these new residents. There were terrible issues in inner cities with immigrants coming in, uh, wanting to work, wanting the dream of America, but having a very hard time making that transition. In 1892, Helms married Jean Preston, his childhood sweetheart. The couple was assigned to a mission in the struggling community of Boston's South End. It was the mission of Morgan Chapel, established a generation earlier by Henry Morgan. Helms immediately went to work caring for society's outcasts. He figured we can make their lives better. We can help them out of that depth into which they have sunk through no reason of their own, through no fault of their own. Helms also worked tirelessly to convert others to his cause. Well, I think he was like many American entrepreneurs. Uh, the initial visionary person. There is always such a person at the beginning of something. It's a person who can gather the right people, a person who sees a problem, who can identify what will fix it, and who has the energy to fix it. He was a hard guy to say no to. And he had a belief in what he did. He said uh, many times that, that man's nobodies are God's somebodies. As the 19th century drew to a close, the Industrial Revolution brought thousands of people into U.S. cities. Goodwill under Helm's direction, stepped up to help with jobs, training, and getting people the basics. Well, he wanted to serve God by helping people in a very practical way. Uh, people were unemployed. Uh, they had no money with which to buy food or clothing. And uh, he knew that if he was going to preach the gospel to someone, they couldn't be starving. A ragged group came to Helm's in need of food and clothes. Helms took a burlap bag and went to Boston's wealthy citizens. Instead of asking for money, he asked for whatever clothing they could spare. The initial attempt, for example, to get uh, uh, cast-offs from individuals to bring them back and to give them away to the poor were a disaster. Uh, when he laid them out at uh, the Morgan Chapel and invited the poor in to uh, take the clothing, uh, it was like a feeding frenzy among sharks. There isn't much dignity in receiving a handout. On the other hand, if you're part of that process, if you're employed and you get a paycheck and you can decide what clothing you want to buy or what food you want to buy or how to take care of your family, there's a great deal of dignity uh, in that process. Helms hired people in need, many of whom were considered unemployable, to repair damaged items. He priced used clothes fairly and invited the neighborhood back in. The Goodwill store was born. Not charity, but a chance. It believes more in prevention than cure. That is what a job does. In 1898, Helm's wife Jean died from tuberculosis, leaving behind three children. Two years later, Helm's married Jean's sister Grace. Although the name Goodwill Industries would not be coined until 1915, 
1902 became known as the year Goodwill Industries was officially born. Oh, I think uh, the public's perception was mostly just uh, you, were, you were sort of rag pickers. Uh, we'll send you our discards, and uh, most of it was uh, torn uh, or uh, beyond use or needed mending or laundering or pressing or whatever. And so you, uh, in the early days at least, you uh, did a lot of repair. Instead of giving handouts, Goodwill Industries stressed that donated goods could be sold for profit and that money would be used to pay workers who otherwise might not have jobs. We had day workers and we would pay them four one dollar bills a day and they'd go sign up for a department maybe furniture repair, they'd go take furniture apart or whatever. Uh, in some cases when there was, there was not enough money they'd get a five dollar work for clothes. As word of Goodwill's success spread the Methodist Church provided the fledgling organization with funds to begin setting up Goodwill operations across the nation. By 1920, there were 15 Goodwill agencies in the United States, including Morgan Memorial in Boston. In the early 1930s, Goodwill Industries opened its doors in Canada. In subsequent years, ties to the Methodist Church gradually dissolved as Goodwill sought leaders from outside the ministry and as federal funding opportunities in the United States made it necessary for Goodwill to become a more secular organization. When Wall Street crashed in 1929, Goodwill was ready. It helped thousands of people who otherwise would have had no clothes on their backs. There were many people that didn't have jobs and of course Goodwill repaired things then. We repaired things because then I think Repairing things was the best rehab in the world if you didn't have a paycheck. In 1941, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor would galvanize Americans and goodwill. During World War II, Goodwill's role was collecting salvage. Uh, that was a big push by the government for the wartime effort. Edgar J. Helms was nearly 80 when he passed away on December 23, 1942 leaving behind his second wife, Grace, and 12 children. Three years later, the war ended. Goodwill had always welcomed those with disabilities and had been helping wounded veterans since World War I. The return of World War II's fighting men cemented Goodwill's commitment to retraining people with disabilities. In the 1950s, Goodwill became a household name. Before his death, Edgar J. Helms traveled the world in hopes of setting up goodwill operations abroad. Today, there are more than 200 goodwill agencies in the U.S., Canada, and 24 other countries. The goal of goodwill industries over the next 20 years is to improve the economic independence of 20 million people around the globe through work. Times have changed but Helm's vision remains constant. We have courage and are unafraid. With the prayerful cooperation of millions of our bank contributors and of our workers, with the help of Almighty God, we will press on till the curse of poverty and exploitation is banished from mankind. <laughs>